Hey there and welcome to another Photoshop tutorial. This is Steve and in this tutorial we're going to talk about the difference between Adobe Illustrator versus Adobe Photoshop. That's a question that a lot of people have like when should you use one and when should you use the other and what are they good at. So that's what we're going to talk about here and I'm going to touch on a couple things with InDesign at the end of the video as well. So stay tuned for that. But let's dive right in and talk about Illustrator versus Photoshop. So first let's talk about the differences and really the benefits of the two of them. Okay, Let's talk about Illustrator. First, Illustrator is vector based. Vector based basically means that the images are drawings that are scalable. And that means if you draw a tiny little vector based image that's the size of a postcard in Illustrator, you could scale that up to be 100 feet by 100 feet, and it would still keep the same resolution, essentially. You wouldn't get any blur. And that's different with Photoshop, because Photoshop is raster-based, so it's images or pixels. And if you take a postage stamp-sized Photoshop image and blow it up to the size of a football field, it's going to be extremely blurry to the point where you can't even see what you're looking at. And that's because you only have so many pixels in a Photoshop image and that's what you've got. Now, don't get me wrong, there are ways that Photoshop can cheat around that in newer versions, which is actually kind of awesome. But it's not unlimited scalability like you have with Illustrator. Okay. Another thing that Illustrator does and is kind of what it's primarily used for is drawing with paths. And so you use the pen tool a lot, for instance, in Illustrator and you draw with paths and you make these outlines of things. And that's the primary way that you work in Illustrator and it's really good at that. In Photoshop, you're actually manipulating pixels. And technically speaking, moving pixels is easier than drawing with paths but you're essentially moving or changing colors or transparencies of pixels in an image. And then finally with Illustrator, it's scalable. And I actually already talked about that, but you can go from tiny to huge and it stays exactly the same. You don't lose any quality. And that's a real selling point for Illustrator. Whereas with Photoshop, it's not scalable. And going back to that postal stamp, analogy. But the thing about Photoshop is you have a ton of editing options. You have a ton of tools you can use to manipulate those pixels to, you know, for instance, you can use a healing brush tool to remove blemishes. You can use a, a regular brush tool to paint, to add color, to change colors. You can use masks. And if you've used Photoshop, which I'm assuming you have, then you know how versatile it is. But the main drawback is that it's not vector based. So it's not infinitely scalable like Illustrator. Okay, let's talk about some of the primary uses for Illustrator. One of them would be logo designs because they're scalable. So if you want to design a tiny little logo for someone and then they wanted to use it as a billboard, they could because it's scalable and it's a vector. And that's a really huge benefit. You would really have a bad experience if you tried to do that in Photoshop and they took your little JPEG image and tried to blow it up onto their wall and it just went completely blurry. Another thing is drawing. It's very strong in the drawing category and again that's working with vectors. And it's that's right in the name, Illustrator, your drawing. Let's talk about the uses of Photoshop. One thing that Photoshop is really good for is website design because you can use it basically as a layout and manipulate your images and spacing and everything to get your website design dialed in. It's also amazing for Photoshop, which obviously is right in the name, Photoshop. And as we mentioned before, there are just so many things you can do to your images, whether it's actually blurring the background or cleaning up the image, smoothing, softening, brushing, and so many other manipulations that you can do to edit photos. And then finally, if you're actually doing artwork with Photoshop, you can actually paint and do digital painting. And you can do basically like layering and blending and things like that that would not be possible, as far as I know, with Illustrator. I've never seen anyone do that with Illustrator. So those are some of the features and uses of Photoshop. And then one last thing we could talk about for a second is InDesign 
in relationship to Photoshop and Adobe Illustrator. InDesign, as you probably know, is the design software, and it's primarily used for desktop publishing. And a couple of things that you could do with multiple of these would be a business card. You could build a business card in Photoshop, or for that matter, Illustrator, depending on how you wanted to build it. But a better way probably to do it would be InDesign because it is actually a page layout software. But that's one of those gray areas that you could use whichever one you were really comfortable with. But InDesign would arguably be the most appropriate. Uh, same with a poster or a newsletter. Basically anything that involves page layout and lots of text maybe combined with a little bit of design or drawing or images would primarily be done in InDesign if you're an InDesign user. Again, you can kind of cheat some of those things and do it in Photoshop, which as someone who prefers Photoshop and is just accustomed to Photoshop, I do that more than I probably should. But if you wanted your kind of the answer to how you're supposed to do it in an ideal way, these three things would be done in InDesign. Okay, so that's my little summary of Photoshop versus Illustrator and a little tidbit about InDesign. Hope that helps you kind of straighten those things out so you know which way to go with your learning. And of course, if you are into learning Photoshop and you want to learn from me, check out some more of my videos or you can check out the link to my Udemy course in the description below. Thanks for watching. Have a great one.